okay so you may recall in the previous video we uh, ended up with this third integral in our set of fives and we're going towards actually I can see that I didn't leave it at the correct state I still need to square that all right that's the proper final state of that integral before we do the u substitution as I mentioned before we're going to let u equal 2x plus 1 over square root of 3 or 2 over square root of 3 2 over square root of 3 times x and we get that <coughs> excuse me that du is equal to 2 over square root of 3 dx or that dx is equal to the square root of 3 over 2 du now we're going to substitute that back into the original and bring the square root of 3 over 2 outside the integral. And now we have negative 16 over 9 square root of 3 times square root of 3 over 2 integral of du over u squared plus 1. We're going to simplify the, the fractions out front. When we do we'll get 8 square root of 3 negative 8 square root of 3 over 9. And now we have an even simpler integral here, ready to go on to the next phase of this, uh, of the transformation of this integral into something that we can find an antiderivative for. And to do this, now we're going to invoke the uh, a trig substitution at this point. And to do that, we're going to let tangent of theta equals u. We won't go into all the justification or the reasoning behind the trig substitution. The u squared plus 1 is the form that we want to use the uh, tan theta equals u for. Then taking the uh, derivative of both sides there, the differential of both sides, we also get that du is equal to secant squared theta d theta. And I'm going to scroll up so that we can have some more space to work here. And remember that you can pause the video at any time to work out the algebra on your own to make sure you can follow step by step how we're getting here. Again, I'm skipping a lot of steps. You may need to fill those in or to do them as you're doing the problem. No problem with that. Okay, so what we're going to do now is substitute uh, tan theta for u and we're going to end up with tan squared theta plus 1 which can also be written as secant squared theta and then a secant square of theta squared is going to give us secant to the fourth of theta and our numerator is going to be secant square of theta. Once again that's skipping a few steps make sure that so what we did is we let u be tan theta so we have u squared plus one quantity squared in the I'm sorry tan squared theta plus 1, quantity squared in the denominator, tan squared theta plus 1 is secant squared, and that squared is secant to the fourth. The numerator is the du, we're going to swap it out with secant squared theta d theta as seen above. So one more simplification on this, or two more simplifications. So next we're going to simplify the secant squared theta over secant to the fourth theta to just be d theta over secant squared and that's 1 over secant squared theta which is really just cosine squared theta. Alright now if that wasn't enough what we're going to need to do at this point then is to break down that cosine square theta using trig identities and we're going to use the trig identity cosine square theta is equal to and we'll see what that is in just a second so we're going to use the uh, trig identity cosine square theta is equal to one half times the quantity one plus cosine two theta and we're going to bring the one half out divide the eight by two and we're going to now the multiplier on the outside is going to become negative four root three over nine and inside we have one plus cosine two theta all right so we're ready to integrate that uh, the, the multiplier on the outside stays the same. The integral of 1 is going to become theta now. The integral of cosine 2 theta uh, plus cosine 2 theta is going to become plus sine 2 theta over 2. And then a plus C on the outside because we have completed the, uh, we have found the antiderivative and there's no longer an integral there. All right, so I'm going to scroll up just a little and we're going to continue working on this now. 
another identity that we're going to need now. Sine of 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta, which we're going to need to break this down even further. But that 2 sine theta cosine theta divided by 2 in that fraction is just going to leave us sine theta cosine theta as such. Now we're ready to, uh, to go back to our original variables. And to do that, we're going to need to find out what sine theta and cosine theta are in terms of u and eventually in terms of x. So you recall a long time ago, or up just a few lines ago, we made the statement that uh, tangent of theta is equal to u. So tangent of theta, so we set up a right triangle where the angle is theta, and u would be the opposite, 1 would be the adjacent. So that is a triangle that demonstrates uh, uh, tangent of theta is u is u. And then we're going to fill in the hypotenuse which would be u squared plus 1. Now we can tell that sine of theta is u over square root of u squared plus 1, and cosine of theta is 1 over square root of u squared plus 1. When we multiply those two together, the denominators are going to become just u squared plus 1, and the numerator is going to become u, as we see there. Now another important thing is that uh, in going back to u's and eventually to x's, theta, uh, if u is equal to the tangent of theta, then theta is equal to tangent inverse of u. And so uh, now we're ready to put all of that together and we're going to come up with still in terms of u now, negative 4 root 3 over 9 times the inverse tangent of u plus u over u squared plus 1. Now we need to go back remembering that u is equal to 2x plus 1 over the square root of 3. And first distributing the negative 4 square root of 3 over 9 to the tangent inverse of u, tangent inverse of 2x plus 1 over the square root of 3. Uh, again, distributing the negative 4 square root of 3 over 9 to u, square, u over u squared plus 1 is going to give us this uh, crazy fraction here. Um, I'm going to jump ahead um, without doing too much uh, simplifying here. Well, the first thing that I can do is you notice in the numerator I have on the outside 4 square root of 3. And in the denominator of the numerator, I have a square root of 3. So I can simplify that a bit as such. And then notice in the denominator, I have the 9. But I also have in the denominator um, 2x plus 1 over the square root of 3 quantity squared. I could square that denominator 3 and bring it outside. That's going to be 9 divided by 3, which is going to give me um, actually, I can't do that just yet. Well, I can if I distribute the 9 all the way through there. And so I'll do that now. And hopefully that makes some sense there. Um, I don't know if I have more room on this page. I'm going to continue on the next page uh, doing a little bit more simplification of this. And we'll pick it up there. So the first part of this, the negative 4 root 3 over 9 of the inverse tangent of 2x plus 1 over the square root of 3, that's pretty much all set. But there is some work that we can do with the 4 2x plus 1 over uh, that denominator there. And what I would do with the denominator is multiply everything out so that I get 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. Um, then multiply all of that by 3. I'm going to end up with 12x squared plus 12x plus 3. Add the 9 in, and I'm going to have 12x squared plus 12x plus 12 in that denominator. Factor out the 12. Divide the 12 by 4, and we'll see where we end up. And temporarily, the final state of this particular integral is going to be what you see there. And I'm going to stop this video at this point, pick it up in the next one where we'll combine these integrals together.